Magazine. We are a startup. Yeah. And very, very proud to have Krishan Keller Hanna, who is a writer and a force of nature in her own right. We, <laughs> we've been friends for a while, so I was very lucky that she, I said, hey, do you want to? And she said, yes, before I even had it out. She, she just dived right in. So she writes for the magazine as well. And then Russell Noldy, who um, is a, it's so funny, right? We're friends, but it's been a, a not in real life friends. So now we get to actually sit on a panel and do stuff together. So um, we at the magazine have always had merch. We always felt like that was a cool thing to have. Um, my compatriot, Alice Briggs, who's not here today, is a fine artist. Mm -hmm. So I am freaking blessed that I can say, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we had a mug? And then like the next day I have a mug, right? I'm very, very lucky. Um, we created this little avatar called Indie Annie. She is our sassy advice giving columnist. And so you'll see us, our stuff branded with Indie Annie. But we, and we'll talk about why that matters and what people want in terms of um, merch. Uh, but this is our sassy Indie Annie author. And then we also have writers that say funny stuff all the time. And so like um, one time we said, you know, it's, it's a trope if we can get enough people to write it, right? We can create a trope if enough people do it. So, because, you know, dinosaur porn that Craig writes now is now a trope. Who knew? Because you can get enough people to write it. So all of those little funny sayings become things that we now sell on T-shirts and mugs and pins. Uh, and they're funny and they make a lot of money. So what we're going to talk about today we're going to go over the basics. This is a 30,000 foot view. This is a fire hose of information. I, we do not expect that you're going to absorb all of it. This is to inspire and spark ideas. And then we're going to give you resources at the end so that you know where to go next, right? So don't feel like you have to absorb everything. So we're going to cover three things. We're going to cover the basics of merch um, in terms of swag. Right? And swag is generally thought of as things that you give away to ARC readers or beta readers or uh, as these genius marketers will talk to you about enamel pins and all the things that go with that. We're going to talk about um, as a retail revenue stream that you can embed or in include in your website so that people can buy product from you that's branded and it's drop shipped to them. You don't have to carry inventory. You will upload imagery, licensed imagery, to a third party like Printful or Art of Wear. They will print on demand and send it to your customer as if it's coming from you. They are transparent in the background, which is kind of nice. And then we're going to talk about, which uh, I know little, literally less than zero about, but these two do, um, designing and carrying inventory and doing direct sales uh, through Patreon and Kickstarter and all of these things. So I'm going to get out of the way when it's time for them to talk. All right, so um, I, I keep trying to make these big and the monitor. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. So what do customers want? What do <laughs> customers want? They don't want your cover they on They don't anything. want your cover on a book. I'm so sorry. I know you spend a lot of time with your cover artists, and you may have done it yourself, but really that's not their motivation. They don't have an emotional connection to your cover. They haven't fallen in love with the characters enough maybe to do that, but they also don't want to be necessarily a walking billboard for your product because that's really what you're asking them to do. So if you think about what their emotional appeal is and what their emotional, um, what they want from it, they do fall in love with the world that you've built. Can they do, something? yeah, Can yeah, something yeah. About this? So there's yeah. also a good chance, a very good chance that you do not have the right to print your book cover unless oh, yeah. you have it actually yeah, we'll talk about that in licensing, trust me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but they do love the world that you've built. So you've got to give those adorable nerds the things that they want, right? You've got to give them um, imagery of your meat cutes or imagery or quotes of your meat cutes if your characters say things. So don't necessarily get hung up on having your book cover on anything because it's, the chances are that they don't want it. Um, they do like, however, unique one-of-a-kind products like signed copies, collectibles, and posters. And you can sell those from your website, and you can sell them direct uh, for things. Um, they want to be included and feel like they're part of the fandom. And yes, I do have a Darkwing body pillow. No joke. Absolutely. I want to be part of that fandom so bad that I have uh, Six of Crows merch all over my house. It's absolutely a necessity. All right. So, Russell, we're going to talk about licensing images. Oh, yeah, you got to license your imagery. Yeah. You, generally, 99% of, of, of designers are licensing only. 
the use for their art on a book cover. And if you want anything else, like any other prints for any other reason, you have to negotiate it with your cover artist and they, because they have to then get a different license. They have to buy a different license often from, the, from where they're getting their, their cover imagery from. So you have to negotiate it, a, 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 a use for any reason, a use for certain reasons, or a use for the one reason. And if you don't know you explicitly have the, the ability to use it, you do not have the ability to use it. Right, so you cannot use stock images. Right, so e the word royalty free, a lot of people see the word royalty free, that means absolutely nothing in merchandise. Nothing, less than nothing. So do not assume that you can use a royalty free image and use that in merch, you cannot. The only thing that you can use when you're printing merch are what are called extended licenses. And mm -hmm. licenses come in all different flavors and they come from different companies. So for example, I have the one pulled up for um, Adobe. Right, so Adobe has this comparison here of the standard license, the enhanced license, and then the extended license that includes merch. Some of them, um, they specifically say the asset can be used in merchandise, templates, and other products for retail. Resale. Unless you have an extended license, you cannot put anything out for merch. You can't use that image. And here's another thing. If you have um, commissioned artwork from an artist, Right? And they've compiled it, so you see those videos where people take the, the body of one and the head from another and the background of the castle and this and that. All of those have to have the extended license. It's not just the end result. If you're using any kind of imagery that you've sourced or purchased, you have to have the extended license for every single one of those. And can we talk about how those are very expensive? They're very expensive. It is often way cheaper to hire somebody to do a custom illustration for you than it is to get those licenses. You're talking about like often 300 to $500 per, per image. Yeah. Yeah. You hashtag probably, that's a Michael Anderley co-opted phrase, <laughs> hashtag probably do not have the right to use the images you've paid someone to create for, your, for you for your website or your covers. So even though you have hired somebody to do a cover for you and you've hired them to do your website, those images are generally only allowed for marketing and advertising purposes. Marketing and advertising purposes is where it stops. Merch, anything that has a tangible product you have to have a separate extended or commercial license for resale for that. Um, there's also uh, lots of questions about if, they've, if you've hired somebody to do it, do you own that image? Do you own the copyright to that image? Chances are you don't. Chances are because unless the copyright- Unless it's in the contract. Unless it's specifically in the contract, but most artists will not release the, co the copyright because they don't want you to, it's not that they don't want you to use it or, or be successful with it, it's because they want to protect the integrity of their art. And so if you stick googly eyes on something, then you know they're the artist of record of that and they don't want that image bastardized. That's just the plain ass truth. So you want to be sure that you um, work with your designer, make sure that if you decide that you want to do merch, talk to them up front and say, I'm considering doing merchandising, let's talk about this, and then build it into your contract, right? Um, if you have a contract with them, genius, everything is great. If you don't, you want to get one because you do not want to run afoul of licensing uh, um, lawsuits. You know, if, you, if, if they've done something inappropriate, it ends up with you, mm -hmm. believe it or not. So be really careful. And so you can also often get like very small batch licenses for things. Like for instance, you can get a cover, you can get, a, often an artist will say, I don't want you going out and like putting this on your website. So I had a campaign earlier this year for my Kickstarter and I said, I don't want it on my website. I want to be able to, to have 50 copies that I make. And we were able to, she was able to include that one time stipulation in a contract. So often they will do things like that. What they don't want you to do is use the image, make infinite amount of money and then never get compensated for it again. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm just gonna pause for a minute and um, apologize because I forgot to Ask my fellow co-hosts to introduce themselves. <laughs> you introduced very well. I right. did me because I'm used to doing this with Alice, so please forgive hi. me. And hi, Krishan. Hi. Uh, one thing is, I, I, I make the mistake of uh, y'all um, assuming that you guys know who I am. My name is Krishan Keller Hanna. Um, 
I am the CEO of the CKH Group, which is a multimedia a multimedia concern. We, uh, we make music, we make movies, um, and I build merchandise. And that comes from me being ADHD and always chasing the dopamine. I'm currently the creator of the Shaman States of America universe, which is a monster hunting universe with 36 titles, and we have a board game, an RPG, and, a, and an audio drama in production currently. Um, I have been, and in terms of 20 books, like I said, I'm your emotional support ace, and I have been since the creation of this, and it's an honor. And I'm glad that you're here, and I'm glad that you spent your time on your dream on us. Let me introduce you to Russ. I don't have anything so motivational to say as that, though I am happy you guys are here. Uh, my name is Russell Nolte. I'm a USA Today bestselling author. I uh, run a company called Wannabe Press. Most of the merch that we use is for our Kickstarters or exclusives, exclusives for like tables or, or to send out to fans. Um, and then if you probably have my, a pin of my face if you were here early, so <laughs> I'm the guy on the, pin, on the face pin. If you haven't had it, you can come up and get it for me later. It's such a cute pin. It's a very cute pin. It's a cute face. Those are the things that I like to carry around with me. All right, thanks. And thanks for the grace, guys. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about what dropship means. Um, dropship is a concept, and it's common in merchandise circles. It's basically where you, um, have a, you work with a company, and the main company that I like to work with is called Printful.com. Mm -hmm. And Printful.com, they have uh, custom printed items. They're all blank, right? So you've got kids' clothing, men's clothing, women's clothing, hats, hoodies, uh, pillows, body pillows. <coughs> Hashtag body pillows. <laughs> um, Don't sleep on the body pillow. Well, that, that's the wrong slang. Y'all gonna love body pillows. Wrong room. Should have been in steamy. Uh, and um, uh, and jewelry and embroidered items. So you can pretty much source whatever you want through Printful and then put your stuff on it. So for example, here's the uh, sleeve. There's a there's the um, laptop case sleeve. I'm not sure if I have internet here, but anyways, um, this is what the end result looks like, right? So you can see it's incredibly well done. It's a neoprene sleeve. I just um, grabbed Alice's great artwork and, and put it on there. So you can create one-off items for yourself, for your own brand, but you can also create things that you can sell on your website, which is um, absolutely fantastic. So the way that Dropship works is the customer comes to your website or to your Etsy shop, because you can do it on Etsy, and you can also uh, use Printful to create an Amazon seller store. It's different from KDP, it's not in the book realm. It's if you wanted to be a proper Amazon seller, you can actually use Printful to push your items and they will drop ship items if someone places an Amazon.com order for you. You don't have to put inventory in there. It's not like the FBA, the Fulfilled by Amazon, where you have to buy bulk items, ship them to Amazon and they send it. It's done um, on demand. The cool thing about Printful and the other dropship companies is that they have warehouses all around the world. So if you have somebody that's in the UK that purchases something, it's going to be fulfilled by a warehouse in the UK. So you don't have to pay that exorbitant um, uh, tariff or import fees or taxes uh, for that. It's all done as if it were a local transaction, which is quite nice. Now, there are things that you need to worry about um, in terms of taxes. Uh, once you get a little bit bigger, the threshold is about selling $10,000 in any particular country or in any particular state. Most of us won't get there right away. If you get that big, you'll, you'll deal with it then. I'm a big fan of starting small and then getting bigger. So the customer comes and purchases it from your store, and then your shop sends the order over to the company. In this case, let's just pretend, pretend it's Printful. Printful will send back uh, a notification to your website. I use WooCommerce for my transactions. Um, Printful communicates back with my website, WooCommerce. My website then sends an email to the customer. So all of the uh, information comes from me to my customer. That's the conduit. There's not a third party company in the mix in the background for them to know about, for the customer to know about, which is nice because you want to own your own channels of distribution. Um, flip side of that is you do have to handle customer service if something happens, but Printful's very good about that. So the transaction stays with you, and then they ship it to your customer. It comes in these little, you know, it doesn't say Printful on it. It comes, and the mailing labels and everything comes 
as if it were you. You upload your logo, and then it looks like it comes directly from you. So that's a neat little thing. So on our store, for example, we carry stickers. Like here's one Alice did that says, I create worlds, I'm an author, right? And so these are, we have stickers and all kinds of things. So what you do is you create, work with your designer, you get your licensed um, uh, designs, and then you upload them to the print um, drop shipper, and then they can put that on all the different blanks, and you choose which products you want. From start to finish, it takes about an hour. It's really very fast, and you can have your, your store up and going in literally in no time. You can have multiple stores, too. So we have our store on uh, Amazon.com. We have it on our WooCommerce shop. We also have it on Google, in the Google store, and we have it on Facebook. All of that is just like ticking boxes to say, yes, I want to sell at these places, and following the instructions for that. So it's really pretty, pretty basic, pretty simple. Uh, quick pros and cons. So uh, Dropship, you can use Printful. There's also a company called Art of Wear. They do a lot of more high-end embroideried items. Uh, they also do um, uh, like pashminas and things. So if you have a beautiful print, like I saw somebody had leggings uh, that they'd done just as a, a print with their book name on it kind of embedded. It was kind of a little um, Easter egg kind of look, uh, beautiful stuff. Um, the benefit to it is you control and own the customer data, right? You're not turning it over to somebody else and hoping that they buy again. You can market to them directly, and the communication comes from your website. There are also things I'm sure you've heard about called affiliate storefronts, like Society6 and Redbubble. Has anybody heard of those? Okay, so Society6 and Redbubble is they give you like a domain name, and you can go and purchase, and you have your store, but it's on their site and you're, they're going to then cross-market to your customers with other people's merch. They don't have a relationship to protect, right? You want to be sure that you own your customer information, your relationship, your data, your marketing. Those are, they're great, but they're also a little bit pricey, right? They're a little spendy. Um, whereas with Dropship, you can control your margin. So you can bring it all the way down to like making a dollar or two dollars if you just want to get the stuff out there or you can go up and make ten dollars a mug if you want it's up to you you can you can choose that uh, and then the other uh, thing i will say is um there's a company called sticker mule sticker mule they do a lot of like the stickers and the they do specials all the time which is absolutely genius and you can get the die cut stickers like i have on the back of my laptop you can get 50 for like 25 30 bucks and so what i do is i wait for the sales and then I just stock up and stock up and stock up and stock up. And those are the kinds of things that you're going to give away for swag, like um, that you're going to send to your ARC readers or your beta readers or, or give away, right? Those are your branded items. Those are your swag. It's a little bit different. All right, so I like to ask questions or see if anybody's got questions at this part. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's so you they assign a SKU, which is a, the same thing. It's a <laughs> yeah. Okay. They do. You you basically ins it's it's one in Printful and then they push it out okay. to everywhere. But you can sell again on Amazon. It's not FBA in the sense like there's two flavors yeah. of FBA of Amazon. There's you can have a store where you do the fulfillment and that's basically you're letting Printful do the fulfillment, or they have the FBA, which is fulfilled by Amazon, which is where you buy bulk items, you give it to an Amazon warehouse, and then they send it out for you. Yeah, I do uh, merch by Amazon, mm -hmm. for t-shirts and tote bags and everything, and, oh, hi. I do uh, merch, by, merch by Amazon for t-shirts and tote bags and everything, and they have a separate AMS portal from KDP, so you can build out a storefront within Amazon, mm -hmm. and with the uh, ASINs, you'd be able to include everything from Printful alongside your books and shirts. And exactly. All that, and it'd all be print on demand. Um, and you can also it. do that if you have an Amazon influencer channel. Okay. So the Amazon, Influ does anybody have an Amazon influencer channel? Yeah, so Amazon influencer channel is basically, you can go live and do videos and things, and then below that you have a crawler with your products and you can use your own products cool. there. Yeah. Do we want to? How do we want to do, do you want, Lee, do you um, want to do Let's it? form a line right here so I don't have to run across the room. Um, and we'll just all line up and take turns. Are you dressed as Miss Frizzle? I am. 
That pleases me deeply. Oh no, the frizz? Oh. <laughs> and the first question for those who are listening at home was, are, uh, do you get an ASIN if you upload through Printful? And then you have to go back and listen to the answer. <laughs> this is just a follow-up for anybody who has not done things on Amazon. What's your name, uh, sweetie? The name is Pete. Hey, James Pete. Pete, 005. <laughs> so if you're doing anything on Amazon, particularly uh, fulfillment by Amazon and your shipping product to another state, which is what you're going to be doing, you're going to have a nexus in that state, which means that you're going to have to pay income tax mm -hmm. in that state. So I want you to think about that for a minute before you decide on fulfillment by Amazon versus fulfillment by merchant. Do you want to pay the income tax to that state along with the other fees? So you only form a nexus in most states if you if you've sold ten thousand dollars in that state. Right. Uh, and but what you can do there's a um, so I, we actually have a merch class that I can tell you about in a little bit. But there's a, a website called taxjar.com that will help you keep track of that and know when you hit that tipping point in any jurisdiction in any state. Yeah. Good question. Thank you. Okay, um, I was wondering if you could explain a little bit more how you can get something like the, the printing companies to integrate with your website, because you said something about like there's another entity that would communicate with you when the customers placed an order or contacted you. Sure. So with Dropship, um, you don't send people to Printful to buy things. They're on your website, and so you need a mechanism for e-commerce for selling on your site, and so most people will use like WooCommerce. Um, or you can do Etsy, an Etsy.com shop, if you don't want to put it specifically on your site. Printful will let you decide where you decide you want to sell it. But you have to have your own shop, your own storefront for that. And you have choices depending on your own tech stack, basically. And Squarespace integrates with Printful if you have a Squarespace account. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you should use Squarespace. I'm just saying if you have a Squarespace, if you've been suckered into having a Squarespace account, you can. Okay. I'm doing the Chrissy Teigen cringe face. Uh, what's your name? Hi, Donna. Hey, Donna. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, I have a question about what address, what return address is on the products that get shipped to the customer. Yeah, good because question. Because my business address is a P.O. box, and I know somewhere along the line while I'm setting this up, they wouldn't take it, and I can't remember if it was Wix or Printful. They, so, so the. So did everybody hear the question? It's like if something is returned, where does it go? It goes back to Printful. Okay. And I they mean, have a they have what's called an RMA, a return slip. Okay. And so they handle the returns and Oh, so when the product is shipped to the customer. Yes. Printful's return address is Printful's on it. return so address. So they're not gonna get my home address. Correct. <laughs> right. They don't get your That's home what address. I was worried about. I don't want yeah. people showing up at my door. Correct. No. <laughs> okay. You won't get you won't get merch sent back. I will say though that if you have, if you're doing merch, you should have a UPS store box. Probably more than a PO box. You can't have a PO box, but like, it would want to be protected. Like if you're shipping stuff from your house, because you'll have merch, and people will literally, people won't always have Printful. They'll be shipping. You should. If you, as long as, as long as you're shipping USPS. Shipping you UPS or FedEx or DHL, which are often cheaper. Like you, you need to return an actual address, which you have to get a UPS yeah. store or somewhere else that does boxes that have actual addresses. So there's a cool, um, a cool thing called a mailbox anywhere. Mm. I'm a digital nomad, and I have a mailbox that physically sits in Austin, Texas. And whenever I get a box or a package or a piece of mail, they send me a text. And I can look at it, and I can say, no, Russell, I don't want that pin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or I can have it forwarded to me wherever I am in the world. So, uh, And that's actually good for business, uh, especially if you do a lot of email. You have to have a physical address on your can spam. Mm -hmm. um, so you need it. Mailbox anywhere or post office anywhere. There's a few of them. Um, what's nice about mine is it's a physical address. Right, it's 6001 West Palmer Lane, and then I have, it's numbered, uh, like a suite number. You and over so there? It, it looks like a very physical address as opposed to a P.O. box, but it's virtual, so I don't really. It's $109 a year. Yeah. And for Sean, it sounded like you wanted to say something. No, I wanted to get to the next question. What's your name? Kim, my name's Kim. Hey, Kim. Um, you talked about the difference between dropship and affiliate, and you mentioned with dropship, you know, it's important to keep control, and I'm, I'd like to, do you expand on that? Like, I kind of like the idea of affiliate because 
just basically put it up there, make some money, you don't really have to do anything about it. And uh, so I'm, I'm wondering why, what is the big advantage to going drop ship versus sure. affiliate? Um, so I'm a marketer. We're all marketers at heart. And so it's important philosophically that you own that customer relationship. So you have your own mailing list and that you market directly to your customer, right? So if you send them to an affiliate, you're notified of it after the sale. You may or may not get their email address. You may or may not get their contact information. You may or may not who, know who they are. So yes, you've made a $1 sale or, or you've gotten a $1 commission, but you've lost the opportunity to talk to that customer and, have a, and build a relationship with that customer. So it's a short-sighted um, method of marketing in, in a sense. Uh, it's much better practice for you to own your own channels of distribution. How many of you guys were affected when Facebook went down? And you have Facebook groups and you talk to your customers on Facebook all the time. When, if Facebook went away, how do you talk to your customers? Your email list, your, your text messages. You've got to own your own data. It's, of it backwards because I'm thinking like the only people who are going to find my store are the people that I send there through my group. My, Not always. My, Not always. No. No. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that I might actually get reader new readers through it. But on top, yes. But on top of that, like you, if when you you control the relationship, you control how the relationship is handled. Much more. Like if someone has a bad experience with with Redbubble. Like, I will never know, but if someone has a bad experience with Printful or on my website, like, I will know, and I can then repair that relationship mm -hmm. without having to rely on Redbubble, because when you are, when you're, when you're been doing this for a long time, you, like, you know how many people screw up, and, like, you want to make sure that, like, you can send an extra pin, or you can send things, or you can, you can, you know what is going on, because you're going to want to have that customer for 5, 10, 20, 30 years, and you want to make sure that they're always happy, and Redbubble is notorious often for sending substandard products that are printed poorly, mm -hmm. and you want to know that that is happening, because then you will not, you, if you don't, you won't know to, to, to change the order or to like take it off sale because they won't tell you and then you just have a bunch of irritated customers who don't want anything to do with you anymore. So the thing is with other, with, with companies, um, they do have those long tail keywords and they go into Google so people can find you in other ways. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is possible for them to find you that way. You're not always going to be just sending the traffic to them. People will, like if they, if you type in uh, author swag or, or um, author quotes, my shop will come up because we have cool merch for authors. It's just. And not only that, but sometimes people will find their way to your fiction through your merchandise. Especially in way if you have managed to create things that reach to the heart of your readers and then they wear that and somebody else asks them about that, girl, where'd you get that? Sugarevil.com, right? And they know it is because it's on the back of the enamel pen. You go to sugareven.com, you buy stuff. You don't know that you're in the Shaman States of America universe yet. You don't know that there's even books involved. And you do want to set it up so it becomes not only just another income stream, but another entry button into your books. So I would ask that you let go of that. Only my readers are going to see my march. Not if you're doing it right. Thank you. Welcome. Hi, what's your name? Hey, Jenny. Um, so my question is, you guys had mentioned to make sure you have the right licenses with paperwork. Um, I have worked with a few artists so far who I've commissioned stuff from, and a couple of them I was thinking, hey, I could possibly you know, use this in merch, and I just said, I'm thinking about using this in merch right up front, and both of them were like, yeah, yeah, sure, no problem, but there's no paperwork. It's just you know, some random message somewhere. So my question is, is there a place we can go that has like a good sort of template for some kind of artistic contract that I can now send them to say, hey guys, I need to, you know, like cover my butt here. We need to get this official. So you can go and look, just look up work for hire contract. That's what I usually use. It says I blank person in uh, rescind my rights to the work, to the work entitled X for why compensation, I mean, it's a little more complicated than that, but basically you want them to, if you don't sign, like, so how copyright works is unless someone turns it over actively and explicitly, they, you, they own it. It doesn't matter if you've paid them $10,000, doesn't matter if you've been using it for 20 years, like 
you don't own the copyright unless someone explicitly signs it over to you. Right. You can also, if you email me, shell at indieauthormagazine.com, Alice has prepared a tangible rights release that we use for things, so we're happy to share that. Shell, it's shell at indieauthormagazine.com. I mean, that's what we do, right? We're indies, we give each other stuff. So, um, okay, so at this point, there's no other questions about dropship. We could talk about this all day, you guys, it really is. But I think um, if we've got some time, we've got about 10 minutes, I think. Where's, my, where's the timer? She's come, she's come around a couple times and shown it to us. She's done like the Vanna White thing. Thank you. Look at that. My <laughs> word. All right, then, thank you. Um, for those of you who, like me, do not have a whole bunch of um, logoized, logoized items, uh, things that just have a logo or things on them, and you are an artiste and want to, can you turn the mic off very quickly? Okay, that's not me. Because the feedback is starting to give me a migraine, okay. Um, oh, hi, thank you. <laughs> Um, one thing that I find that is absolutely, absolutely fun is making my merch myself, designing it, and holding inventory. Now, that is more, a, more of a complicated thing in terms of space and in terms of shipping and logistics than a drop ship, because your drop ship, they already have those decided, those items decided, you decide what gets put on it, and they send it out. This uh, um, holding inventory is the ultimate um, feeling of freedom and control with all the consequences of it, right? So what do we wanna talk about first? Do we wanna talk about what subject matter you would use or what things you would actually, um, what kind of merch? Hold your hand up if we wanna talk about subject matter. All right then, put them down. Um, different types of merch. All right then, we have it. We have that. Sorry, what was the question? Oh, okay. So, the types of things you will want to turn into merchandise um, actually depends on your story, right? If there's a bar, um, if there are locations that are significant, if there's a particular power or anything else that you want your readers to grasp onto, right? Anything that you either have or want to generate an emotional connection to. The, um, the characters that you consider the Hallmark, like your Batman, your Superman, your Wonder Woman, right? And quotes from, quotes from, um, your book, either ones that your readers have suggested, or if you don't have any readers or you're trying to start a meme or something, um, things that you just found funny. A lot of them will flop, don't worry about it. Go ahead. Hi, Shell from Texas, long time listener, first time caller. Hey, go ahead, Shell. Can you tell us what was in your Kickstarter box that you just put out? Oh, the, the one I just put out? Yes. Oh, the war, oh, and we're still hot, thank you. Um, my War Priest box. I do a Kickstarters, I try to do Kickstarters four times a year, and when I do a book one, it has three different types of boxes. The digital box, the Happy Mail box, and the book box. The digital is a $15 goal, and all that is is digital stuff. It will have wallpaper, phone wallpapers for the actual book, and for my shop, which is Caramel Sugar Evil, which is an in-canon store that my characters can go to. Think of it as Hot Topic for Monster Hunters. Yes, all right. The Happy Mail box is the first thing that has anything physical. It has um, a choice of, usually an option of one of three enamel pins. It will have stickers. It will have a book plate that's branded to the series, but not the cover. Um, in this case, War Priest was the fictionalized account of Phineas Gage, the guy who had a pole shoved through his head. You ever remember him? And. <laughs> I had our, our Shaman State skull, which is our logo, but I had a pipe through it. And I made that into a novel pen. 
right? And the book plate has the immortal Phineas Gage, the shaman state skull with the pipe through it. It invokes the memory because anybody who knows Phineas Gage knows the image of his skull with the hole through it, with the pole through it, right? It sticks. Um, I had a postcard that was created with the same image as the book plate, and in this time I put a QRD code in the back so someone could send it to a friend. All right? And then the second enamel pin other than the pole was the Tree of Life, which is um, significant iconography in War Priest, thank you. And then um, in the book box, it was all of that plus the actual physical copy of the book. And the reason why I chose all of those things is because they are strong images, right? They are shareable and they are wearable. I do want y'all to be hawking my stuff when you're walking around, right? Just like all of these, all of these pins. You ask, oh, where did you get that, right? Oh, that's cute. And you get to talking about it. People don't wear your stuff if they don't care about you. And Honestly, they care more about the things in the book than your cover, which is the reason why, don't put your cover on shit. Don't do that. They don't care. They don't care. I, they I really, I spent a lot of money on those covers. I want them to care, but they don't. <laughs> All right, then. I'm going to throw it over to Russell, talking about. So, I hate carrying inventory. <laughs> I hate it. And so if you hate it too, you're, 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 I'm with you. Like having a whole garage full of thousands of books upon thousands of books is a huge pain. However, holding inventory gives you incredible power. For instance, yeah, a lot of y'all are wearing my, my, my face, <laughs> half my face pin. Like I'm giving them away. Often people, maybe even Krishan paid like 10, $20 for that pin many years ago. But now, but I had thousands of them. And like I can, over time, because I hold inventory, like do that. I can give a thousand copies of a book to a library because I have them. Like, please, if you own a library system, I would happily give you many hundreds of books. <laughs> you can, and often carrying like 30, like doing drop shipping for 20 or 30 items or 10 items is often as expensive as going out of to getting 100 or 200 or 300 items. For instance, for, for our hardcovers, which are about 350 a, a, a book, or a little depending, but like roughly around $3 a book to print. Like, I sell them for $30. Like, I can also give them away because I have done Kickstarters and I literally have $7,000 of free books. Like, y'all ain't giving, y'all ain't gonna, no one's gonna beat me on giving away stuff for free or making deals because I have inventory. Like, if you don't have inventory, like, you just can't compete with, like, me when it comes to, like, I can offer you 10 books for $5 if I wanted to. It'd be crazy, and I would be devaluing the, the, uh, my, my whole brand, but, like, you can't do that if you don't carry inventory. Like, you can't say, wow, you know, uh, a few months ago we had uh, uh, one of our, one of our um, contributors to one of our anthologies died, and we spent the whole month. A bill, like just we, we said we're going to give whatever we sell the, the books that you contribute on to the family like whatever that like you can't really do that if you're spending ten dollars a, a hardcover book or three dollars a print or nine dollars uh, uh, to, to, to have swag especially but also to have really nice swag like y'all who have the pins like they're nice pins right like they're they're they're, they're like like, like they're pretty, they're well put together, and like they're free. Like, 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 like it hopefully will show like the quality that I bring to the rest of my work to say, hey, like he gave me this book for free. It looks like it was uh, it's worth thirty dollars. Like, what must he? What must the things that 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 uh, uh, what must those things cost? Like, what must the, the things that you pay for cost? So it is not fun to carry inventory, and you can't if you hold inventory, you can't write it off until after you sell it. You can't write the cost until after you sell it. So if you've got thousands of books, I literally carry thousands of books and I pay, ta and I pay taxes on them because I can't sell, I can't write off the, the cost of them until they literally get sold. So all problems, but you, if you want to win and have a better chance of winning, like you should carry some inventory of things that are beautiful and easy to replicate and, the, and scale is your best friend with like a thing like a pin or a print or something that you know is gonna be popular.
How about now? Yeah, no? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I have kids and a former husband. I should be able to project just fine. Um, uh, if you'd like to grab the slides, just uh, grab the QR code there and it will take you to the slides. If you have questions, please feel free to ask any of us. We're happy to answer things. That's what this show is all about. You have your emotional support. Asexual author, yes, you do. And can we get some plugs in before we go? Yeah, sure. All right, then Russ. Uh, outside, next. I will have pins if you haven't gotten one for free. We also have a Kickstarter course, a Kickstarter book that's on Kickstarter now at kickstartyournovel.com, which will tell you basically everything you need to know to like run and launch and, 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 and dominate your Kickstarter. Me and Monica co-wrote the book. It's awesome. It's at kickstartyournovel.com. And we have a presentation tomorrow, the, sec the, the second half of our Kickstarter presentation, Monica and I, 1045 in the pretty big room. It's the silver and gold room. It's not the biggest room, but it's like the second biggest room. <laughs> <laughs> and if you are wanting to know how to build your world, so you will always have merchandise opportunities and stuff that people will love and crave, come see me tomorrow, 115 in the platinum room, which is the second largest room, in the, the third largest room. Not as big as theirs, but still big. I'm proud. See me there, 115, and we'll talk about it, all right? Thanks, guys. We appreciate you. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. I think we ended right on time. <laughs>